Hey, this is Joe with SoFly, and in this video, we are going to make a spreadsheet to import variable WooCommerce products. So if you don't already have an import file, you don't have an inventory management system, your client haven't, hasn't given you one, or you don't have an affiliate feed or something like that, you can just create the file by yourself. And it's not too bad. So to get started, I'm gonna go over here to Google Sheets, and we'll create a new spreadsheet. You can use Excel, you can use numbers, you can use whatever you like. They're all pretty much the same. I like Google Sheets, it's pretty easy to use. Um, and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create all of our columns. So first up, we're gonna create a product name column, have a description. And for pricing, we can just put a price here. We can just have one price, but actually I wanna take advantage of uh, WooCommerce's, uh, they do a pretty good job with regular price and sale price. So we'll have two different columns there for that. I'll put some of my products on sale. Um, we're gonna have some images here. Um, and then we're gonna have, these are gonna be t-shirts. So we're gonna do sizes and colors. So uh, first we'll have our color, then we'll have our size, and then I'm gonna categorize these with a nice little category tree. So we'll have our categories. So you can structure your file in pretty much any way and WP All Import is gonna be able to handle it. However, I think that this is the easiest way to do it. So this is what we're gonna do in the video. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have one row for each product variation. So every combination of size and color is gonna have its own row. So I'm gonna call this one my men's t-shirt. And this is a slim fit shirt made from high quality cotton. Nothing but the finest. And I'm gonna sell it for $14.99 as the retail price and it's gonna go on sale for $9.99. Now for images, you can see here I have some images. We have three men's t-shirts here. We have blue, green, and red. And the women's, we have blue, green, and red as well. Um, we'll get to the images in just a second. First, I'm gonna fill out all of my product variations. So we're gonna have a blue shirt, and this is gonna be small. We're gonna have another small, another small. And then over here, we're gonna have a green, and a red, and we'll take care of the categories last. We'll get all these kind of filled out first. Okay, men's t-shirt. So we actually only need to put the description in here for the first product variation of the whole group. And then let me put in my images. So we'll get my blue t-shirt, we'll get the URL here. We'll go back over, blue, and then we'll put our green URL in here. And now we'll get the red one. And this kind of bugs me, so let's kill these, these little linky dudes. Okay, that looks nice. All right, so let's fill in these prices here. We'll do this one also at $14.99, on sale for $9.99. And then my red t-shirt, because red is awesome, it's gonna be $19.99, no sale price. For the categories, we're gonna do hierarchical categories. So the way that works is I'm gonna say these are clothing, it's gonna be a parent category and then men's and then shirts. And this little carrot here, when we're importing in a WPL import, this is gonna indicate the hierarchy. We can actually use whatever character we want and we can change it. This is the default in WPL import. So we're just gonna use that. All right, so now let me take um, these and let's do our mediums. And then our larges. Oops. Right, because we can use the same images, obviously, because the sizes, we're just gonna use the same image. We only care about it for the color. All right, drag this down here. And our pricing as well. Perfect. All right, so now let's make a women's shirt. So I'm just gonna copy this. And we'll change that. We'll drag this down. Change all of our product names. We'll keep the same pricing. And we'll change this category over here. Finally, got to change the images. So here's our blue shirt. And our green shirt. And then our red shirt. Hmm. 
Oops. There we go. And let's just get rid of these. This is highly irritating. All right. So looks good. We'll expand that. And that's it. That's our file. Um, you can add more, more attributes if you like here for whatever you're doing. That's pretty much it. You can add SKUs if you're going to use SKUs. I'm not going to bother with any of that. This is good enough for now. I'm going to change the title of this just so I know what I'm looking at. This is my uh, clothing import. So how do we get this into WPL import? We have a few options. We can uh, download this as a CSV, and then we can just uh, upload that to WPL import. But what I'm going to do is get a little bit fancy, and I'm going to publish this to the web. And then the entire document is going to be a CSV. So we'll publish that. Yep, we're gonna publish, and I'm gonna copy this URL. Now we're gonna go over to WPL import and select new import. I have a few options. If I had downloaded my CSV, I would just upload it here, like if you're using Excel or something like that. But I'm gonna download a file from URL. I'll put the URL in, in here from Google Sheets and click download. Now we're gonna go here to create new products and continue to step two. And here's my file that I just made. We'll continue to step three. And now we just drag and drop. So we'll take a product name, we'll take our description, and then we'll go over here to the WooCommerce add-on. Now these are variable products, so we're gonna select variable product right there. I'll drag in my regular price, drag in my sale price, and then we have our attributes. So color, it's gonna be color, add an attribute, call this one size. And there we go. For variations, we need to tell WPL import how the file is set up. So in this file, all of our variations for a particular product have the same title. There are no parent products. So we'll drag here in here the product title. And for parent SKU, we're just gonna leave this blank. So we have two SKU settings. So here, if we leave this blank, it'll use the SKU settings from the general tab. This is the parent SKU. So in WooCommerce, it's a little bit confusing. The way they do it in WooCommerce with variable products is they have a parent product, which is actually hidden. And that parent product has a SKU. So if I had a parent product SKU, I'd put that in here. Over here on the general tab, this is where I would put the SKU for my product variations. So for example, my blue medium men's t-shirt, the SKU for that would go into this column here. I'm not really gonna use um, SKUs on this import. Um, for my store, I have a pretty simple store, so we're just gonna leave it as it is and let WPL import and WooCommerce generate some random SKUs for us. So for the purposes of this import, I'm just gonna leave it blank and we'll continue down here to the images. All I have to do is drag over my image URL and those images will get downloaded. We have some options down here. It's gonna automatically search the media library for the existing images before importing new ones. And it's gonna match by the image URL. So it's gonna pull this image URL and it's only gonna download one copy of that image. And it's just gonna use it for all the different products in there, um, which will make things go nice and quick. Finally, we have our categories and tags. We just have here our hierarchical categories. So the options, we can, each product has just one category. We have multiple, so multiple product categories. However, ours are hierarchical parent-child categories set up like this, right? So one element in my file contains the entire hierarchy and that's right here. Drag that in, give it a preview. There we go. Clothing, men's, shirts, done. All right, so that's it. Now what we're gonna do is continue to step four. So we're gonna auto detect the unique identifier. That's good. We're just gonna leave all of these with the default settings and then continue. All right, now we're gonna confirm and run the import. So that import just took a few seconds. All 18 products are imported. Let's go ahead and check them out. All right, here we go. So we have our men's shirt and our women's shirt. Let's pop these open and choose an option. All right. Red. 
And our red shirt's nice and pricey. Looks good. How are the women's shirts? Categories came in good. And we're in good shape. And then over here, we have our attribute information. All right, now, because we did this in Google Sheets, we can actually kind of do some cool stuff. So let's say we want to make a kid's shirt. I'm going to be kind of lazy. I'm just going to use the same images as, as my men's shirt. There we go. That looks good. Oops. We'll just change this to kids. That looks good. And then we're going to lower the prices because, you know, less fabric and all that. So we'll start at $9.99 on sale for $7.99. And we'll just adjust that. But you know what? That red shirt is still pricey, eh? It's in fashion. All right. So that looks good. So now what we can do, because WPL import is so powerful, we can go over here to manage imports. I'm going to go over here to the settings on our import. And let's take a look at these settings again over here. So every time for each record of this import file, every time this import is run, we're going to create new products that are newly present in the file. I just created some new products in my file, right? And it's going to update existing products with the data in my file. So I can go back over here and let's actually make these sale prices a little bit steeper, right? So let's put these on sale. So let me grab that and put that here and here and here. So we're going to lower, we're going to put all our shirts here on sale. They're going to be $8.99 on sale now. My kids' shirts are going to be $7.99. So we're updating our existing products and adding a new product here. We'll go back and then we're going to save our import configuration and now we're going to run the import. So we'll confirm and run the import and WPL import is going to pull down the latest version of that file. All right, so we've created nine new products and updated 18. So let's go back over here to our products. And there we go. We have our kids shirt on sale for $7.99. And now our men's shirts are on sale for $8.99. So you can actually create this file and you can manage your whole WooCommerce store from here. Then to make things even more interesting, we can go back to our import and go back to settings. We can go here to scheduling. Now in automatic scheduling, we can set this import so it runs every day at let's say eight o'clock in the morning. So now all I have to do is I can make these, I can have my client or whoever make edits here, update their products. And then every morning, this import is going to run and pull down the latest information from my file and update my store. So that's how you can basically run your entire WooCommerce store from a spreadsheet that you've made from scratch in Google Sheets. And then you can keep it updated as time goes on. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.